Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video serves as a follow up to a video I did on Shaper 3D back last year in April 2022. That video has been the most viewed content on my channel with over 19,000 views. Given its popularity, I think it's time to revisit Shaper 3D, especially considering the significant changes that have happened over the past year. In this video, I'll be highlighting the developments in Shaper 3D over the past year and asking the important question, is it worth the price in 2023? And stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to discuss one feature which I think will make it a true competitor to Fusion 360 and may even make some people make the change over to Shaper 3D from Fusion. So let's get into it. In the original video, I discussed how Shaper 3D was an incredibly intuitive and capable 3D package specifically designed for the iPad. This means that you can perform precise CAD modeling on the go right on your iPad. Initially, Shaper 3D was a CAD application that was exclusive to the iPad, but it has since expanded to Mac and Windows operating systems. Its workflow will feel very familiar for anyone coming from Fusion, Inventor, or SolidWorks. On the iPad, it boasts an intuitive interface, making it enjoyable to use the stylus and other touch gestures for the 3D modeling process. On PC and Mac, it relies on the mouse and keyboard, but you can use the stylus such as a Wacom pen if you prefer. Shaper 3D primarily focuses on the engineering community, so it's perfect for anyone that needs precise modeling, but I have also seen it used for things such as jewelry, product design, and even woodworking. So give it a try, it may even work for you for whatever you're doing. However, it is worth mentioning that it does lack any sort of surface modeling or sculpting capabilities. If you're seeking those kind of features and modeling, alternatives like Nomad for the iPad or software like ZBrush and Blender for desktops might be more suitable for you. Shaper 3D is working towards being a complete CAD package with features that include a web viewer, an AR viewer, the ability to produce technical drawings, a powerful visualization mode, the ability to import and export a range of 3D formats, a good directory of tutorials to get you started, and a growing community. On the topic of community, I also want to let you know that I've just launched a Discord server called Drafted's Design Studio. It's a place where we can all come together and learn and discuss tools like Shaper 3D. Because one of the fastest ways to learning is to surround yourself with other people that are also trying to learn. It's a brand new server, so you'll be one of the founding members if you join. There's no cost, it's a free community. The link to the Discord server is in the description of this video. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. And before we continue, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Your support means a lot to me and it helps the channel grow. Let's take a moment to discuss the big changes that have happened to Shaper 3D since my last video. The first thing is that Shaper 3D is now available on Windows operating system, which is expanding its accessibility. Prior, it was only available on Mac and iPad and there's no cloud syncing between them. So that's another thing that's also changed. There is now cloud syncing. This allows you to seamlessly work between all your platforms, whether it be iPad, Mac, or Windows, and it's built into the software itself. It's even available in the free version. Regarding pricing, as of September 2023, the subscription cost is $38 per month USD. However, if you opt for an annual subscription, it's $299, which breaks down to about $25 per month. Comparing that to its main competitor, Fusion 360, which charges $70 per month and $545 per year. And one more thing is that the most recent release has introduced a full UI refresh, enhancing the visual clarity and improving the overall UI layout in preparation for its next big release later this year. Looking towards the future of Shaper 3D, its most exciting update is coming, which is the introduction of history-based modeling. This is a game-changing feature, which I believe will position Shaper 3D as a direct competitor to Fusion 360. For those of you that are unfamiliar with what history-based or parametric modeling is, it's simply a way that CAD packages like Inventor or SolidWorks or Fusion, they have this timeline of features. Because you have this timeline of features, you're able to go back in time and edit things or move things around and it will flow through to affect the rest of the model. For instance, you might create a sketch and then extrude that sketch and then add a fillet and so on, step by step adding more and more features. All these features become points in the history of your model, allowing you to backtrack and edit them as you need. And these changes will flow through to the rest of your model. So those of you that have used Fusion, SolidWorks or Inventor, you're probably very familiar with this workflow already. 
in the past and currently Shaper 3D lacks that feature, which I think has probably discouraged some users from switching to Shaper or using it as their primary CAD package. The ability to go back and edit previous features in Shaper 3D marks a significant enhancement in its capabilities. Additionally, it opens up the possibility for others to take your work and understand your modeling process by reviewing the timeline or making modifications to the specific features. With the current modeling workflow of Shaper 3D, it doesn't allow you to go back and make significant changes to any features that you put in. While you can make some changes like adjusting the distance of a face or the radius on a fillet, you can't really go back in time and make significant changes to the model itself, which will flow through to the future stages of the model. But this upcoming parametric history-based modeling will change all that. It will allow for that. And this is referred to as parametric modeling. I'll be sure to thoroughly test this feature in the future when it's released. And I'm also currently testing it in the beta version right now. And I believe it will seriously improve Shape of 3D for many users. So to answer the big question that you all came here for, is Shape of 3D worth the price in 2023? Is it worth the price now? In my last review, I said, not really. Not unless there was some sort of specific requirement for you to be able to do CAD style modeling on the go on your iPad. And so you're kind of paying for that novelty. But now a year later, since that last video, so much has changed with Shape of 3D. So much has been improved and added. Things like cloud syncing and Windows operating support. And of course, the big change that's coming later this year, which is the history-based modeling or the parametric modeling. You also have to consider it's like half the cost of Fusion 360. I will admit that Fusion, I still feel, is a bit more for the professional user. And Fusion 360 probably works a bit better for like assembly style, multi-body components. But Fusion 360 doesn't have an iPad app. So if you want that, Fusion doesn't have it. So that might be one thing that pushes you towards Shaper 3D because you want that portability. And I've been playing with Shaper 3D a lot lately and it's been great to walk around the workshop here and be able to take measurements and then do that modeling on the go without having to come back to my PC every time or doing the changes on the screen wherever I am. Maybe I'm outside measuring something, fixing something up in the model, syncing it and then going back to my PC and continuing the work. That's something that Fusion can't do. So I think with all that said, I can pretty comfortably recommend Shape 3D, even if you're paying for it. So I would say, yes, it's worth it now. I wanna say good job to the team because I think they have really improved so much with this app. They are really dedicated to it. They have a long-term vision for what they want to achieve and they're really pushing towards what they want this program to be. In conclusion, whether you're a new user or returning to Shape of 3D, I highly recommend starting with the free version. With the free version, you can use any version, whether it be Windows or Mac or iPad or across all three. You also have access to all the features that the app has to offer, all the tools that are there. You can use them all in the free version. The main difference with the free version is that you can only have, I think, two projects on your account and also the export quality is not very high. So you're probably not going to be able to use the free version and export for 3D printing. It's just going to be not good quality for that. So the free version, it's enough to get in, start learning the app without any cost or time commitment. To kickstart your journey with using Using Shape of 3D, I strongly recommend getting into the beginner tutorials and just learning the tools, learning how to use it. There's plenty of available resources out there on YouTube and on their website or even directly in the app itself. You can even get a sneak peek of the history-based modeling in the beta version. And in another video, I'll show you how to get access to that beta version and test it out for yourself. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that video when it's released. And if you found value in this video, then please hit the like button. It really helps the channel grow and I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching.